Hey snowmobilers, welcome to one more video in my series covering the 2025 Articat snowmobile lineup. In today's video, we're going to be talking about all of the shock absorbers that Articat is using for the 2025 models. You know, I think the spec sheet is a little confusing and doesn't tell you the whole story, and that's why you're here, and you picked the right video to watch because I can explain it. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, this is a buyer's guide for the shock absorbers used by Articat in their 2025 snowmobiles. In order to provide buyers with usable information about which shock package best fits their needs, I'm going to stay away from the fine details such as the shock length, the features that make Art the Articat version of each shock different than competitor shocks, stuff like that. This video is intended to be a tool to help you decide which shocks you should get when you spring order your 2025 Articat. There are generally four shock absorbers on every snowmobile. One shock per ski, so that's two. A shock in the front of the rear suspension, and a shock in the back of the rear suspension. I'm organizing this video into two parts, and we'll have chapters below in the description so that you can skip ahead to the part you're most interested in. The most basic shock absorbers are called hydraulic twin tube. What this means is that there's two tubes. There's a second tube inside the main shock body and hydraulic fluid is pushed between the two tubes using a piston and bypass ports. These shocks are not adjustable. However, they're the least expensive to replace and they tend to be very forgiving, decent, comfortable ride. So they're a good budget option. Moving up in price and complexity are the Articat IFP shocks. IFP stands for internal floating piston. These are the base shocks in almost all of the full-size snowmobile models. Inside the shock body is hydraulic fluid and nitrogen separated by a piston. Theoretically, since there's a gas charge inside the shock, you should be able to change the pressure of that gas, thus tuning the ride quality. In reality, this isn't practical for normal riders to do this. You need special tools, and if you're not comfortable working on this yourself, any adjustments should be made by either a dealer or a qualified mechanic with the correct tools. These shocks are rebuildable, meaning that the shock body itself, unless it's damaged for some reason, you can rebuild or replace the seals for a fraction of the price of a new shock. And there's repair shops that do exactly this for a very reasonable price. New for 2025 is something that Articat calls the AC5S shock. These are designed by Articat and made by a third-party supplier. The 5 stands for 5 adjustable settings with a dial at the top of the shock. I don't believe this is a replacement for the shocks that we're going to talk about next. I think these are good for what they are. They're not quite as expensive, but they are an adjustable shock. If you want the highest quality shocks found on a 2025 Articat, then look for the name Fox. Fox Zero QS3 shocks have an external reservoir similar to the AC5S shocks. While the shock itself contains hydraulic fluid, the reservoir holds a nitrogen gas with a floating piston. As the shock compresses, hydraulic fluid push, pushes through a port between the main shock body and the reservoir. In this passage is an adjustable valve. The valve has three positions and you can adjust it for your ride preference. That's why they call them clickers because there are three positions and they, they click in between each position. Position. The QS3s are extremely popular in snowmobiling and ATV circles because they're easy to use. They just have three settings. The dial, it's very clear. It's very easy to adjust. They're very effective. They're very durable and they can be rebuilt. And it's a very common shock to see. So there's a lot of shops that can rebuild these. Another variation of of the QS3 is what Fox calls the IQS. Articat riders know this as the ATAC or ATTACK shock package. This has the same three position compression adjustments as the normal QS3 but still has the external reservoir. However, you can adjust the compression by pushing a button on the handlebar instead of manually turning the dial. This is handy because the shocks are often covered in snow and ice and especially in the rear suspension. It can be difficult to get down there on your ends and knees and adjust them with your hand and it's just a lot easier to adjust them from the handlebar. So if you're if you're one of those people that adjust shocks frequently, especially on every ride, then the attack option is popular for those riders. Lastly are mountain specific shocks known as the Fox 
Float 3 QS3 shocks. Again, these are three position adjustable shocks. The float part of the name indicates that these are air shocks, which means they don't have the external spring used by the rest of the Articat lineup. You don't, there are no springs wrapped around the shocks on the Fox Float 3s. Instead of adjusting the spring preload, what you do is you adjust the air pressure in the shocks using a hand pump. So that's a very brief overview of each shock package, but I think where it gets confusing is where the shocks are used. I'm going to organize all of this by breaking out each shock package and then listing where it's used. And again, there'll be chapters in the description that you can click to if you need to uh, skip ahead. All models in the BLAST platform use the hydraulic twin tube shocks. All models all positions. While it's true that models in this platform are designed more for function than performance, it's also true that they're intended for people who don't want to spend a lot of money to, in order to get all the creature comforts of modern sleds. For that reason, hydraulic twin tube shocks make perfect sense and are a great value. So don't underestimate those. Next up, the base model M or Alpha 1, uh, the ZR and the Riot, in addition to the Pantera and the ZR7000 in the Legacy Procross platform, they all come equipped with the Articat internal floating piston shocks as standard. Next up is the Articat AC5S SnowPro package. We see SnowPro in the name. Regardless of which model it is, you know that it's you're going to get the AC5S shocks. So the ZR600 and 858, for example, the uh, M600, 858, and the Riot 600, 858 all come in the Snow Pro package, which gets the uh, AC5S shocks. I have tried to get more information on these shocks and what, if any, suspension setup differences there are for the Snow Pro models, but there isn't much out there. I've even asked insiders that I know from the photo shoot, but I have not been able to get any information from them in order to prepare for this video. At the top of the shock absorber food chain is where all of the shock Fox shocks are. And this is where things, they, they tend to mix and match shocks a little bit more and it gets a little more confusing. The RXC gets Fox QS3s on all four shocks, but the ski shocks and the rear track shock are rebound adjustable also. So you'll see QS3 R's for the skis and the rear shock, but a QS3, just a plain QS3 shock for the center or front track shock. The ZRRR, which is a Procross platform sled, is the only one that gets the Kashima coated QS3R shocks. Just like the RXC, you get QS3Rs up front on the, on the skis, so the rebound adjustable, and the rear track shock is also a QS3R. The center shock, or the front track shock, is a standard QS3. For the Catalyst platform ZR and Riot, in addition to the Thundercat and the Riot 9000 on the Procross platform, the attack package comes with Fox IQS shocks, on the skis and the front and the rear shock. The center or the front track shock is an Articat IFP or internal floating piston shock. We're on the home stretch. Stay with me. You may have noticed that the center or front track shock is never adjustable if the sled comes with the attack shock package. Well, there's always an exception, and that's the Mountain Cat. The Mountain Cat is equipped with all Fox clicker shocks. If you get the Mountain Cat with standard Fox Float 3, all four shocks are QS3 versions with a manual clicker. The rear track shock is a Fox, is a Fox Float 3 QSL, which means that it has a lockout function for the third compression setting. The top-of-the-line Mountain Cat gets the attack shock package, which comes with Fox Float 3 IQS shocks up front on the skis, a manually adjustable Fox Float 3 QS3 on the center or front track shock, and finally, a Fox Float 3 IQS L shock in the rear, which has the lockout function. This video is a lot more work to put together, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you for sticking with me. Your dealer has more information on the 2025 models right now. I encourage you to contact them for more detailed guidance on which shock package is right for your style of riding. With that, I'll wrap it up. The 2025 Articats are getting a lot of attention, and rightfully so. Keep checking Articats' events page for updates on demos and static displays so that you can see these machines in person. And with that, thank you for watching.